Now this session is not coffee talk anymore. Um, you guys have heard enough to last you 10 years. Okay. If the Lord speaks to me, I'll do another one this afternoon. We could talk about uh, some other things. But I think I have I've allowed you to realize how things are operating. And we need to call things as it is. I want to get back into what we're talking about for the lessons. Um, this will be session two. We're talking about words. We were talking about the tongue last night. So one of the subjects that is in the book, Heavenly Visitation, which is the study guide you have. One of the subjects has to do with prayer and talking about words. So I'm focusing on that this weekend because that's what the Lord is telling me to highlight. Okay, we're focusing, focus, focus, focus. Okay, so we're focusing. All right, so the we talked about the importance of words. We talked about visitation. And we got into talking about what James says about the tongue. If you remember, we started into that. I want to continue with that in this is lesson. This is really the beginning um, uh, of lesson two that we started last night. We did one and two at the end. So just so you understand, we're talking about why words are so important and why the tongue is so important is that we were made we were made a living soul through the breath of God which is the spirit of God you got to remember that we were made out of the earth we were breathed into and we became a living soul this word soul is different than the word spirit you have three different words that are being used they are not interchangeable the word soul is not your spirit. Your soul is not born again. I know that you've heard this, but the scriptures clearly teach that there are three different parts of you. For instance, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, you got verses 22, 23, 24 there. It's talking about three parts of man. You've got to remember this, that Paul differentiated between these three parts, there are three different words. If you look them up and study them, there are three different things. You've got your body, which is your flesh. You've got your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. It's your psycho psychological part of you. That's where the warfare is. I mean, according to Paul, every high thing, every thought, to bring it into obedience to the, to the knowledge of God. Um, the works of the flesh, one of them is listed as witchcraft. That's not listed as a spiritual thing. It says the manifestations of the flesh are as follows. One of them's witchcraft. One of them's lying. So you might not be a witch, but you may be a liar. None of them inherit the kingdom of God. So I want to see you in heaven. So you might want to tell the truth. Because no one else is going to say this, but I don't, want, I don't want people lying to me. Especially if they're Christians. Especially if they're ministers. Why would I want somebody to lie to me? Now, people of the world, they're going to do all these things because they don't have the Spirit of God. They're in control by the Spirit of the world, the prince of the power of the air. They have no, Paul said they have no resistance. So if you're around a person who's not saved, you're, you literally are in a liable position you cannot trust a person who's not born again, okay, at all. A demon can come at will and do whatever they want through that person. You cannot think because they're very good looking and they're, they're nice and they're polite that that is going to keep a demon out. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what they say. They are a liability to you. There is no way you could be assigned to hook up with a person like that that's not saved. 
period. Now, it's already happened to you. It's already happened in relationships. I'm not talking about that. I'm not saying, Paul said, just keep where you're at. Don't change it, because through you, your spouse will be saved. Okay? He says that. But he was pleading with people, please don't get married. And if you do, just know that you're going to be split in your affections. You're going to want to serve God, and you're going to have to serve your spouse. Then you're going to have children with open mouths that are going to need to be fed. And you got ball games, soccer, bad grades. (laughs) Then you got accidents, which may include pregnancy. You got all these things that it opens up. And Paul said, I would rather you be like me. But they're so good looking. Oh, I've heard that. I, I've, I've counseled with my friends at Southwest Airlines. Why, did, why, are you, why are you still with them? They beat you. They're an alcoholic. She got born again. Then she got filled with the spirit at the breakfast table on a trip. Because I'm not going to sit there. So just pray this prayer with me. She, you, she said, I said, why do you stay with him? She goes, because he's good looking. That's what she said. I go, okay, well, you better have good insurance because those bruises on your face, that didn't come from your dog. I couldn't believe it. I hear this all the time. And and then they they get a divorce and they marry another person just like that. It's so weird. I go, I need to know what your father was like because I think I found what's going on with you. Moving on, that's not what this is about today. So we got, the, we got the tongue, right? We got the tongue is the Spirit of God hooking up with your tongue. So if you pray in the Spirit, which the devil's not going to want you to do, because that's a direct line according to um, you know, Romans eight twenty six, direct line for praying out the will of God. Yes. Well, of course he's not going to want that straight line that you've got, you know, the bat phone, the Commissioner Gordon phone, the red one. You just pick it up. He doesn't want you picking up that phone. He's going to tell you that phone is of the devil because it's red. He's going to tell you all the things to discourage you. You're going to be mocked and ridiculed because you got a direct line. You're going to be mocked and ridiculed for Christ. You're going to be persecuted for believing what you believe because it is the truth. It causes you to drive out the devil. It jams his signal so that he cannot be effective in your life. Okay, if you speak from the Spirit and you hook up with the Spirit and you do that, what happens is it cleans up your English. It cleans up your life. It cleans up the way you react in situations that you normally... I mean, you realize that there will come that day because the Spirit of God will mentor you where you walk away from somebody and you'll say, I should have said this, I shouldn't have said that, I should have done this. There is no more of that. You preemptively know what you're supposed to do. And you see things ahead of time. You see the trends. You go, well, this ain't going to turn out right. So I'm going to have to step in. I'm going to have to say this. I'm going to have to do this. Why? Because you see that the path that the person's on is not the right path. Why? Because you're assigned to your brother. You're, you're, you're in a, you're, we're all assigned. We're all brothers keepers. So I was talking to you about police officers. If your initial thing is rebellion, well then, how, how are you looking at God as well? Like, in other words, how do you think about God? What is your father figure? So you want to marry how your father was. But what if your heavenly father is totally opposite? What if he's really good and he wants to provide for you and protect you and he's always good because he is, he's good. If you ask, if I ask for something, I'm not getting a snake. I know that. 
he is so close. It's a, it's a, it's a local call. So my spirit is activated and hooked up to God. God in us. Not God with us, God in us. Okay, God in us is just better. Why would I want, why would I want the mantle of Elijah when I've got the spirit of Jesus in me? Why do I want any prophet's mantle? I'm actually non-prophet. Why would I want someone else's mantle when I have Jesus inside of me? I'm only saying this because I want you to see the narrative has been changed to shift you off of what God has already set as the way it is. If you want to see miracles, if you want to see favor, you want to be in health, you want to prosper, you want to have God with you in everywhere you go, well then you have to get back on the track of the simplicity it's really too late. I'm not called to change ministers or the church. I am not called. I'm called to you that are outside the church because you're all good people and you're traumatized and I'm right there with you. Because if you have a story about your pastor, I have one that's worse. And I have actually marks. All of us have been hurt because we trusted, okay? But these are people that we placed up on pedestals. Now, for me, personally, I would rather stay home on Sunday morning, pray in tongues and study and get ready for the next spirit school. I'd rather, I'd rather pull out a guitar that has two strings on it and sing Kumbaya and study than go to some churches. The reason why is, there's, there's a sign over the church that says Ichabod, but no one wants to say it. No one wants to admit that the glory has departed from the church. It seems impossible. You know, the church is supposed to be the one that overcomes the gates of hell, that the gates of hell can't overcome it. You overcome the gates of hell. Literally, the one where you trample on serpents and scorpions and have power over all the enemy. The one where you're supposed to walk in and your invisible friends leave. And you have no more demons. But no one, you didn't give an offering, you didn't have hands laid on you, you didn't even know the songs. But the devils couldn't stand being in the room. That's the church. That's the destiny right now of everyone. So I'd rather have a two-string guitar and sing Kumbaya than go to Ichabod, Church of God. Or whatever. I didn't mean to say that because that is an organization. I'm not saying that. It could be Pastor Frigidaire at Freezer Assembly. I don't want to waste my time when I can read Ephesians chapter 1 and feel the power of God to where I go, Kathy, man, I can't stand it anymore. We got to stop praying. I can't take it. We, we actually literally have to stop and say, we got to do something else. Uh, it's stronger in our house than it is here right now. That shouldn't be. It's interesting. You know, you, I go to my piano, play by the Spirit, I'm not recording it. No one's filming me, transcribing it. And birds will come and sit on the windowsill and listen to me play. Birds, the ones that you know are scared of you. You see that, now there's gonna be all kinds of invites for me to be on TV now. Some new doctrine about Animals and music, you know. <laughs> I'm serious. No, this is how it happens. What about you and your tongue hooking up with God and saying something from the other realm? There's a transaction that happens and stuff starts blowing out of your way. And you haven't even had your second cup of coffee yet. Why is it 
that in your personal life, the presence of God is stronger than in your church, in some churches. Why? It's because if you yield to the Spirit, you're going to go into the place that is normal, and everything else will seem below and abnormal. And you're going to feel displaced. And then when you go there, if you start mentioning, so um, when's the healing line? I need healed. Oh, we don't do that. Well, what do we do? We teach on health. Okay, that's good. But what about the demonstration of the gospel? When's tongues and interpretation? Oh, the pastor does that. Oh, really? Well, the nine gifts of spirit are for everyone. So then the congregation sits there, and they're told. Well, it becomes just like the Pharisees. So then Jesus shows up as a guest speaker in that synagogue. Remember that, his first synagogue? He, got, he, he, he went in there. Do you, you realize what happened. There was a man that had been fine for years until Jesus was a guest speaker. All of a sudden, he gets thrown down and starts manifesting a demon. Everything was fine until Jesus showed up. Okay, the demon was comfortable. They sang, the demons loved the song service. They loved the pastor, his wife, everything. Everything was fine until the head of the church showed up. Then all of a sudden, what was there the whole time was exposed. Guess what? He didn't get invited back. Why? Because he caused problems. So he went out to the fields. Okay, so if you start praying in the Spirit, and you start quoting the Word of God, and you start coming against cancer, you start coming against the princes and the powers that are in your location, what's going to happen is you've picked the fight that the church was supposed to pick. Oh, my God. Okay, so what happens is people feel displaced. They feel like all they want is my offering, and all they want is a volunteer. So I'm serious. I'm serious. I know people. I know people, and I know the pastor. And the pastor said, we've missed you. We've missed you because we need volunteers, and, we, and you were supposed to still tithe even though you didn't come. They were told those things in a way where, it really, if you just bunch it together, we miss your tithe. <laughs> and we miss your hot body, your warm body. I say hot, warm body. Because you're a volunteer. Because, you know, handing out the chicken dinners on Friday night before bingo, it was, it's great because you can just bring, you can just get people to cook. But see, if you're prospering, you just go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, you get a couple buckets. But no, you know, we, we, we can't afford that. But the status symbol that's in the driveway, you can afford? <laughs> but you can't buy people chicken? You can't take care of people that can't pay their rent? Oh, well, that's not the church's responsibility. They need to work. It's like, yeah, they are working, but they, they can't work. And they got children, and they're a single parent. So it's, it is your responsibility, according to the Bible. If you want to bring the Bible into a pastor... It is your responsibility, okay? So what happens to you is you pick a fight when you pray in the Spirit and you yield to the Spirit if the environment you're in is not at the level it's supposed to be. So you start to take it personally. So the tongue is very important. Words are very important, but the tongue is important because your tongue, as you can see now, is hooked up to your spirit. As a Christian, it is hooked up to the other realm. So for you, it says, if you have faith that can move mountains and speak the mysteries, but you don't have love, you're nothing. So what happens is the devil has to come back because you're doing it. You're speaking the mysteries, you're moving mountains, so he's got to get you out of love. And so the emphasis is on faith all of a sudden for years, and I'm an expert of faith. 
I can give you every scripture. I can do it. I can quote all the faith scriptures upside down in a hailstorm. <laughs> but I can't stop the hailstorm. What happened? I'm not in love. I'm nothing. I became ineffective. And that's what has happened. But no one wants to say it. But you'll say it. You want to know why? Because you got the marks of abuse. You've been abused by the shepherds. I don't even hear an amen, do I? You want to know why? You're afraid to amen. And the ministers are like, oh me. See, I don't consider myself a minister. I'm Kevin. I just didn't have anything to do this weekend and Kathy came with me. I'm serious. I don't want to be a minister because I got to ride a bicycle backwards in a snowstorm to get here. I got to be poor. So I don't want to be a minister. I'd rather be successful and let God prosper me and favor me and trust me to bring forth the message as a Stephen, as a Stephen, as a table server. Got killed by Paul. Got killed for being a table server because what he spoke was from the other realm. Read it in Book of Acts. He got stoned. They grit their teeth and they killed him because what he was speaking was the truth. As a table server, he was not a five-fold minister. It was enough that Paul kill, had him killed. No offerings, no prayer lines, no prayer shawls for $1,000. No breathing on you. Nothing. We got chicken today with broccoli. That's what you get. Stephen was a table server. He did the dishes for you after you left. But he was full of the Holy Spirit, and he was so effective they killed him. Jesus was so effective, he spoke the Father. Whatever the Father was saying, he spoke it. And they killed him in three and a half years. He, Kenneth Hagin told us at graduation, he said, Jesus was in the ministry for three and a half years and he did the will of the Father. He said, if you do the same, you won't last long either. That's what, that, that was our send out. Well, I've already lasted seven years. They killed Jesus because he spoke from the other realm. He didn't speak on his own. How many of you can get up here and speak what the spirits say and not mention everything about you? You got to speak and you got to deliver and serve a hot meal, even if it's cost you, even if the money doesn't even come in to pay for the venue. Can you still come and do it and be happy about it? Could you go back to work as a minister? and work a job just to stay doing what God's called you to do because those days are coming really quick. In fact, that's the, the most unpopular prophetic word of 2024 is mine. The word of the Lord came to me and said, tell the ministers they're going back to work. Get a job. He told me, get a job. Well, that, that's like a lead balloon. That's, he's telling me the reason why is that they have lost touch with people and that they need to get back into the marketplace. You still have to have that compassion and that touch for people. Now, there are people, ministers, fivefold ministers that are doing it right, I'm not talking to them. They all know, all six of them know in the world. No, <laughs> all of them know. I'm not talking to them. You wouldn't be able to sit here. I'm talking to those who have lost touch with the reason why we're in the ministry. It's for someone else. To help others, even if it costs you. Now, this is what's interesting. As a successful businessman in the corporate world, you have to be willing to lose money to do the right thing. You have to be willing to put yourself into the market and let it go the wrong way. You have to be willing to be in it for the long run, which means you're going to have to test the markets, which means that at times there's gonna be supply and demands changing, and you have to be willing 
to change your model for what's happening. If you don't do that, you miss the opportunity because all of us still need toothpaste. We just don't want it for six bucks. So if you change the packaging and you change the label a little bit and it, you can knock the price down, well, guess what? I will pay $4 for a tube of toothpaste instead of six. You all need your haircut. Not me as much, but I mean, there are people that still need their haircut. So it's always going to be that way, right? My wife is always going to need purses. So there's a market for things that are always going to be there. That's the thing you should focus on. But in, when, the, when you pray in the Spirit, the Spirit will lead you in the direction that is projecting the path. It's not the path yet. The Spirit leads you on a profile that is an algorithm leading the target. It's leading the target. It's not following the target. If you look at the algorithms of missiles, it's based on where the missile will be at a certain time that's in the future. It's not based on following it. The guidance systems, one person that you should be, re you could save me 3,000 hours of teaching if you would just do this, because I've listened to all 3,000 hours of Chuck Missler. He was a Department of Defense engineer. He developed the guidance systems for our, our missiles, the ICBMs, the nuclear weapons. He developed the systems for that. It's based on the cheetah. The cheetah can run up to 85 miles an hour. It's documented. That cheetah has a name. I forget her name, but she was clocked at around 80 miles an hour. There was one that would, they think it was 95, but I think something happened with the documentation because I see the one that's 80. Okay, she was documented. They did it so they can even measure the paw prints. She touched the ground every 22 feet on her run. She was 50% in the air and 50% on the ground on her run. And they watched the algorithms of how she led a target. She didn't follow the targets, her prey. She led the target. She used her tail. She positioned herself to conserve energy and movement. Knowing, and that's why today, I mean, you know, you'll hear from Chris, because he's, he's my pilot that I fly with in the military jet. Um, Chris was flying F-18s off, off of ships, but you, if you talk to the pilots today, there are missiles that it's really hard to get out of. If they're fired at you, it's really hard to, to foil some missiles today because of this technology. It's getting harder and harder to have defensive systems. So there are missiles where it's, it, if, if it's a certain type of missile and you know it, it's really going to it's really going to be hard. And a lot of times you'll see in, in films and movies where the pilots just eject because it's not really possible in some circumstances. And I, I'm, not, I'm not Chris. I fly with him. I want to be like him. But I'm still learning from him. But what I'm telling you is the Spirit of God wants to foretell you. But he also wants you to forth tell. He wants you to speak forth the things that are not as though they were. You can't be discouraged because things don't go the way they're supposed to go. So the last four years we've been in the desert, but you keep speaking what God wants. And it's pretty obvious what he wants because I don't want what I have now. And even the people that chose that don't want that now. So it's going to be a big cheat this time because there's nobody. It's so blatant. So obviously they have some other plan, which is even more evil than you've even imagined. That's why we got to get the church ready because we got to be ready to lead the target. We got to be ready to get the truth in our spirit from the Spirit of God and then speak it forth 
We got to speak the things that are, are not as though they were. We got to say what God is saying, even if it's not happening. We got to be Noah the day before it rained. You got to feel what it was like to be Noah the day before it rained. He was locked in. Everybody was shut in. Everybody was just doing what they do up until the day it rained. Moses was a hero the next day. But up until then, he was not a hero. If you want to be a hero, you got to be willing to live your whole life the day before. Can you do that? You can do that through the Spirit. It's almost time for the kids program, so I'm going to wrap it up. So James says that this, the tongue leads and it directs your life. It steers you, a whole ship. So Jesus, as you can see in the book, Jesus told me to make sure that with everyone, you do not cast judgment on anybody. You don't put anybody in hell. You don't exclude anybody from the grace of God. You don't do that. You don't pick up a stone because it's coming at you. Just order your size because it's coming right at you. You better duck. If you throw a stone, duck. I'm telling you the truth here. You don't want to be in the seat of judgment because you're going to be judged. That's the way it is, okay? What you want to do, Jesus said, was I died for everyone until their last breath. They have the ability to repent. Every angel, I was told this in heaven, you'll see it. If, if, I don't know if it's in the study guide, but it's in the book. You don't have to buy the book. Don't worry about it. I'm not trying to sell the book. I'll tell you what it says for free. If you don't want to pay for the book, just take one. Just don't steal it. Tell them that you're taking it. Jesus said that the angels are instructed to bring people in cycles of repentance. Every person on the earth is brought in cycles where they are revealed even through nature that God exists and that he is a, a creative good God. And the angels try to position people with you so that you will share the gospel with them. So the angels are instructed that no one to them is an impossibility. The angels work with everyone. Jesus said, I want everyone to come in. Everyone is given up until that point. But there are so many people that don't have messengers sent to them because we need more laborers in the field. So, I leave you with this. When you pray in the Spirit, something bad will happen and you're, and you're just at peace because it ain't over yet. That is faith. From that place you speak. It's the iPad, right? I left this on an airplane that was going to Louisville at work. I knew exactly where I put it. I need that iPad because it's got all my manuals on it and I have to be legal with the FAA. I gotta have all my manuals with me as a flight attendant. <laughs> I know exactly where I put it. The airplane broke, so they were going to leave it for the mechanics to fix. We took another airplane that was coming in, and we're going to Chicago. So we ran, grab our stuff. Passengers are already waiting. Get over there. I left my iPad on that airplane. So it left in an hour when it got fixed because it was just, uh, you know, it was just a sign-off, actually. So... Oh, I got it. It's not there. So they said, well, did you look everywhere? I go, yeah, I know exactly where I put it. I put it in my little cubby hole that I have. And um, I said, it's right there. So 
I called ahead to Chicago and I, I told the agent that was going to work that gate, I said, when it comes in, would you grab that and then send it back to Phoenix? That's where I was based. And I said, sure, we'll do it. I told my, my crew members, I, I go, so you checked your bag, everything? I said, yeah. No, I know it's there, you know, because it's one of those things, you know. I do it every flight and I got out of my, just like we get. And, um, so I teared up. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, do you, I said to the Lord, do you remember when Kathy and I lost those, those keys and they dropped from midair into the middle of the table because we asked an angel to go get them? Do you remember that, Lord? I said, and I said, you can do that right now. So I opened my compartment and sitting on top of my bag was this. There is no way every flight attendant, I said, look, you can look yourself. There's nothing there. Nobody was around that area because it's a secure place on, my, on the airplane for me. What do you do with something like that? I didn't say I, I tithe. I gave to my favorite minister. I'm anointed. I didn't say any of that. I said, God, have mercy on me. I need help. You can send an angel and retrieve that iPad. He didn't do it off of merit. He did it because he's good. Amen? And I feel the goodness of God when I pray in the Spirit. When I pray in the Spirit, I'm leading the target. I'm ahead. And I find myself not going the way I was going to go. I find myself saying, I'm not flying today. I find myself like, I'm not going to that city today. I'm going to go here. I find myself, I'm not giving my money in this offering. I'm giving it in this offering. I find myself going to somebody that others wouldn't go to. I find myself ministering to them, and it's a domino effect for the rest of their life. And I get a bigger harvest on souls off of that one person that was in the Subway sandwich place than the one that was sitting on the front row of your favorite church. Because there was no agenda and there was no reward physically. It won't get me on TV, but it gets me a seat closer to Jesus at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And right now, I told Pastor Jan, I go, me and and most of our staff will probably be out in the parking lot at the Mary Supper of the Lamb, but at least we're at the table. Yeah. Because there's so many of you students that are going to do much better. Because you're going to exceed us in the next generation. <laughs> because I'm teaching you to take from the wells of salvation and speak forth. This is a generation that is prophetic within their selves. Prophetic speaking forth even if it's a party of one. Not having to have the things that you're told you need to be established. When you pray in the Spirit, you're known in heaven. They can hear you speaking, and the angels know that you're speaking from the very will of God. So it's your tongue. Right? When I pray in the Spirit, I started out, I'm going to pray 10 minutes. I set a clock. Kathy and I actually set it on our phones. We actually have like an app that's an hourglass. Because there are times where like we're tired and we don't feel right. We're like, well, we got to pray a certain amount of time in Spirit because we've got to invest in the Spirit. So I, I feel like i got to tithe I got to tithe um, my tongue's time, so it's 2.4 hours. I'm tithing my 24-hour day, 2.4 hours in tongues at the, at the minimum. I've already done more than that already before I got down here. I've already got my more than two hours in before I got here this morning in this room. But I always, I always make sure that I've invested in the spirit realm and not just in my flesh and in my mind. So. It starts with you, you've got to walk right. The way you walk right is you imitate your father, your father God. How does he walk? 
Well, when he walks, just read Psalms 29. I mean, the earth trembles. The cedars crack at his voice. When God shows up, the mountain starts burning. It's, things start melting when he steps on the earth. He has authority because he created everything. He's your father. What does Ephesians 5.1 says? I'm glad you asked. It says, be imitators of God as dearly loved children. Well, does God say anything except what's in the spirit? No. So if you speak in the spirit, you're being like him. Which is our goal, right? Amen? Okay, so we're going to do the kids program now. So we had coffee talk. And then we had this session. Now we got the kids program. Then when we come back, we'll have photos. And then we'll start the afternoon session. Preferably at 2, we'll let you know. We want everybody to be back at 2. We're going to take photos with the kids. And then we'll start the next session. We're going to have a session this afternoon. Um, we're going to have deliverance school. I'm going to teach deliverance school first. Then we're going to teach prayer school. And if you all are still standing or sitting and conscious, then we'll have tonight. Okay, so I got to preempt you all. You got you to know. You, you, had your con you had your conspiracy theories this morning. You had your session. But now we're going to have the kids program. This is what I need. Everywhere we go, we have at least 60 kids. They all pray the prayer of salvation. They all hear about Jesus. We have professional pilots. We have professional police officers. We have professional paramedics and nurses. We're doing a bunch of kids stuff here. We're going to shoot dinosaurs. We're going to teach them in the simulator how to fly. We're going to teach them. I think we're going to teach them how to bandage up wounds today, right? Yep. Okay, what else are we doing today? Shooting dinosaurs. So we're going to train them. Um, our, our police officer right here, Dennison, um, he's going to train them in how to handle uh, rifles and pistols, but they're Nerf. They're Nerf. Did I mention Nerf? <laughs> they're Nerf rifles and Nerf pistols, and they're going to shoot dinosaurs. And he's going to teach them um, accountability and safety. Um, Dale, you're our nurse. You're going to teach the kids how to right, bandage up in cuts, treat cuts, and how to contact 911. It's really easy. It's 911. But we're, we teach the kids to help you in an emergency. Okay, so we got that. We got, uh, I'm going to go get my uniform on, and Chris is going to, he's already, Chris, you're ready to go. We're going to teach the kids about flying. We're going to have them up here. We're going to have a little ground school, and then we're going to separate them out. Um, I would like you to stay for the 15 or 20 minutes, if you could right now. I'm going to go get dressed. You got another break. But if you could come back and pray. So if your child has not received Jesus, they're going to they're have the opportunity to do that um, in the next few minutes. And then we're going to do the, pro the projects. And then um, if you have a child, how many signed up? 50. 50. Okay. If you have a child that signed up, we need you to stay with them because we want you to be there. Um, during this process, okay? If, if not, you can come back. Does it look like it'll be two if I shut up and t stop talking, right? It'll be at two, right? Projected at two o'clock, I'll start deliverance school. And you, if you have invisible friends, you will leave without them. <laughs> Amen. Okay, then we'll do prayer school. We'll teach you how to pray, and then you'll pray with Kathy and I, Okay. Then tonight, uh, is everybody still listening? Because I'm, I'm getting into the good stuff here. Tonight, we're going to have worship, extended worship, and then we're going to um, have your kids, we're teaching them how to pray for the sick. They're going to pray for you to be, to be healed. This is what I'm doing, training the kids to prophesy as well. So they're going to bring you 
prophecies. There are going to be scripture cards and there are going to be rocks that have words on them. I'm going to teach them how to deliver words. By So all of you need to be here tonight. If you want to receive a word, you're going to receive it from a child. And if you need healing, we have people being healed. We have prayer clause that they pray over and then the kids go out and hand them out. If you're having bad dreams and demonic type of visitations, um, people are being delivered by that. So by the clause, okay? We're also going to be giving out a lot of musical instruments tonight. So I'm telling you all this now because if you're a parent and you have a child, we have uh, probably about 50 instruments, right? So we have pianos, we have drums, we have flutes, we have saxophones, we have guitars, electric and acoustic, violins, drums, drums okay. So... The only thing is, I don't want to see these on eBay. These are your storting your, with your child. If you take an instrument, I expect when I come back in a year that they're going to play with us in worship. That's what I'm trying to do is, is I want to have a, a teen worship team in every city. So if... Is there any parents in here that have children here that you would commit by the Spirit of God to make sure that your child is able to practice and to use that instrument? If so, um, you can come up tonight and we will give out those instruments until they run out. Okay? So I need you to pray. I, I need the parents to commit to assisting their child to practice or to get help YouTube these days, you can sit and watch um, any instrument and learn how to play, okay? We also have courses online by the amazing Gillettes who have, have done courses. We have um, amazing Dean Mike who's, who's doing percussion. We have, who else? We have, yeah, Jason Brittany, of course, but um, we have the bass coming out, right? And um, I think I might do the cello and a couple instruments myself, but I only have three days extra a day, so, th I mean three minutes a day <laughs> extra. So, um, any of you parents in here right now, you could commit to, to receiving an instrument and storting it to your child. Anybody wanna raise your hand right now so we have a kind of a, okay. All right, so we don't, that, that's under 50, so we're good. Okay, so tonight we're going to take uh, communion, right? We got communion. We got all this stuff for communion, right? Okay. And this is the big one. If you're going through a financial thing right now, I want you to go back to the book table and take something off the table for free. Don't run away when you grab it. Tell them that you're doing it so they don't tackle you. But if you're having trouble right now financially and, and it's just you, you still need one of the books, then just take one. Can you do that for me? Say yes. yes. Okay. I want to help. I also want you to go home and train your child what you're seeing here. I want you to get them to where they'll prophesy and pray over you and give you a word. Okay. I want that you to get them prayer claws that they can take with them and hand them out wherever you go. I want you to get these scripture cards so your, your child goes out and is handing them out everywhere, telling them, because this is the generation that's going to usher in Jesus Christ, I believe. I'm not a prophet. I'm just telling you that this, these, these children are the ones that I'm assigned to. I'm assigned to you, but you're assigned to the children, and I'm investing in them, okay? 